All right, good, every, uh, good evening, everyone. Um, this is going to be a thing, and this is sort of a unique experience for us. Um, we've been doing remote meet meetings for over a year, and then uh, we had, I think, an in-person meeting um, for two meetings, and so hybrid. So um, my name is Michael Garland. I'm chairman of the Urban Conservation Commission. Um, before we start um, this evening's uh, public hearing, we actually have to reorganize the board. And so I'm going to turn this uh, matter over to uh, Ginger. Do I have a motion to a chair? I'd like Tom, Vice Chairman, I'd like to nominate Michael Gott for a chairperson. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 So vote. Okay. All right. Thank you. And do I have a motion for a vice chair? I would move to uh, nominate uh, Tom Fallon as vice chairman of the Con uh, Conservation Commission. Okay. Do I have a second? I second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Two vote. All right. Terrific. All, All set. Done. Thank it's you. All yours. All right. So um, most of us are here. So, and I don't think any uh, members of the commission are are uh, dialing in remotely. Uh, so in attendance today are Tom Fallon, uh, Patrick Cunningham, Allison Holmes, Megan Langley, and myself. And then uh, town officials and employees participating are Caleb Moody and, and Ginger Buto, our clerk. Um, so this meeting, um, this is July, July 14, 2021 meeting of the Urban Conservation Commission. Um, this meeting is be being conducted both in person and remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, which is and modified as of June 16 of 2021. Uh, for this, the commission is convening either in person or by remote participation for the public, although I see we have a good participation or a good audience here today, which is good to see. For the public to join remotely by telephone, um, call 1-408-650-3123 and enter access code 942-845-549. Where the public can join by computer at gotomeeting.com backslash join backslash 942-45549. Uh, the remote access information has been posted on the town's website identifying how the public um, can join. And this meeting is being recorded by Auburn Cable Television. Um, all supporting materials for tonight's meeting have been posted to the town's website and they're available there uh, to the um, um, watching remotely public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. Um, so since we do, apparently we do have some participation remotely, let me go over the rules <coughs> um, for those who are going to participate remotely. Um, I'm going to eat, go through each of the public hearings for tonight. I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. Um, after, um, and after that person has an opportunity to speak, and after I conclude my remarks, I'll go through with the members of the commission, uh, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. And please speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate meeting minutes. Um, if members engage in discussion with other members, please do so through me, taking care to identify yourself so we have a clear record. Uh, for anyone in the public who wants to um, speak, um, I will ask members, of, I will ask for your name and their, your address. And then once I acknowledge you, you'll have three minutes to, um, to speak on anything that we uh, have on the agenda for this evening. And then if we are taking votes tonight, they'll be taken or conducted by a roll call vote. That means that I will ask uh, each member individually for their vote. So having said that, the first matter on tonight's agenda is the 7 p.m. public hearing, Gold Star Builders, Inc., for a request for determination of applicability for a single family house at 63 Avenue in Auburn. Is there a motion open? So moved. Is there a second? A second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It's a vote. Is there anyone here on behalf of Gold Star Builders? No 
Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Bornstein, can you hear me? If you if you would unmute, please, sir. He is for the Auburn. Did you unmute your phone? Oh. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Bornstein, can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can. Okay, and can you tell me um, for which public hearing you're here on? Please put the billboards. Um, I'm here for the Sean billboards Brown. along uh, the Mass Pike, the proposed billboard. Okay, sir, we'll get to you momentarily. Thank you. Okay. All right. Is, there, is there anyone listening online uh, ready to present uh, the request for determination of applicability for 63 Chestnut Avenue, and that would be Gold Star Builders? Okay. There is no one in the audience answered in the affirmative, and no one online is answered in the affirmative. Yeah, so, yeah, we're here. Oh, sir. We, said, Doctor, we couldn't hear you. Okay. We, yeah, right. we're here, but. Yes, right. they're not. Yes, we're going to oh, the abutters. So, all right, so okay. we're going to the abutters? You're the abutters? Okay. All right. So generally speaking, sir, um, I mean, if the applicant isn't here to present the um, their their project, we normally would not have a hearing on it. I mean, they've, they've got the burden of proof, if you will, or they have, if the, as the, the person putting forth the project, they would be the ones to present it, and then you'd have an opportunity to speak. If you If you want to have an opportunity to speak, that's fine. Uh, I'll, it's it's your choice. I mean, my inclination would be, I don't know the reason why they're not here to present the project. We didn't receive any notice that they wanted this matter continued. Um, but it, it is a public hearing. It is on the agenda. So if you wish to speak, sir, just identify yourself by your name and your address. I'm Bob Dyer, 61 Chestnut Ave. Okay, sir. And uh, my question is... Why don't you come up here? Does this have a site plan? Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. Kathy, we're one of the abutters. Okay. And my question is, if they fail to show up, does this thing die, or they go ahead without having this this meeting approve what they want? No, they cannot. Okay. Uh, sir, they they have requested. They want. They're trying to get a determination from our board whether or not. We have jurisdiction over this project. If we okay. if we decide that we do have jurisdiction, they'll be required to pass a call to, a notice of intent, and there are, there are certain conditions they will need to comply with. Um, it's customary for when we get projects like this for builders to submit these requests for determination of applicability. And generally speaking, they show up. We will not consider this if they are not here to present the project. You will not consider what we're saying. No, no, I won't consider. We won't consider the project oh, okay. if they're okay. not here to present it. Okay, so I don't know the reason why they're not here. They didn't notify Ms. Buto that they wouldn't be here tonight. I expected they would have been. So um, we're not going to take any action on this tonight. Uh, I'm, I imagine we will notify them and ask them why they didn't come. And if they wish to uh, put this on the agenda for our next meeting, um, you know, it will be posted on the town's website, and you will have an opportunity to participate at that time. Can we express that? Well, you, you can't. Um, I mean, yeah. generally speaking, um, it's we think it's better if there's for the, the moving party to be here and then to be out and forth. If you want to tell us your concerns, that's fine. But like I said, we're not going to take any action on this tonight if they don't show up. So my, I leave it up to you. My major concern is how often are they going to put this off and uh, they go ahead without the approval of this board as it stands? And I, I told you no. I okay. told you they they cannot. They need to get a, a determination from our board whether or not we have jurisdiction first. Yes, sir. Uh, What's your name? My name is Jerry John Mario, 21 Oxford Street North, a butter to this uh, pro uh, proposed project. Okay. Um, as far as uh, uh, okay, as far as um, uh, notification of the butters, do they have to go through that process again? Will we get another letter when they'll be? No, as long as. Original notification was done properly. I mean, it's, it's not uncommon for public hearings to be continued in order to give us a chance to take a look at the, the project. So um, they don't have to send out uh, notice by certified mail anymore. And again, just to be clear, because they're not here, we're, we're not going to continue this matter automatically to the next meeting. We will inquire, um, to, we will try to find out why they didn't appear tonight. Okay. And then um, if they want to continue it to uh, July 28th, 
that will appear on our agenda and you'll have an opportunity to speak at that time. Now, did we get notified of the next meeting? It will be posted on the town's website. So we just we should just so monitor that. that yeah. it's but it's over. July 28th. That is our next meeting. The right? next meeting is July 28th. So I would I would what I would do is is you can give me a call for the on before the next meeting, and I can tell you if they um, will be on the next meeting or not. One of our biggest problems is the water issue. So yeah. I mean that that's a major event that I have great concerns about. I understand, sir. So okay. Okay. I have pictures going back to 2017. Should I bring those next? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm, and again, I'm sorry they didn't come. We expected they would have been here. So, um, but we won't reschedule the meeting until we hear from them. Are they the owners of the property? I think the applicant is the de is the developer, sir. I don't honestly know. I didn't check the title. You don't know who's the developer? Gold Star. No, the developer is yeah. Gold Star Builders. Oh, they're the developer. Yes, sir. All right. You said, sir. Oh, you're good. All right. All we can. We're all neighbors. He's in my yeah. bed. I understand. <laughs> all right. Thank you for coming. Oh, thank okay. you. What door do we go? No, we're not going to close it. We can close it. Right. Just, yeah, just leave it open. Everything's a secret in this place. <laughs> it's like a maze. It is like a maze. You're right. The only place I know you can come in the back of it, but not the front. <laughs> <clears throat> So it is now almost quarter past seven. Uh, the meeting was called shortly after 7 p.m. The applicant uh, did not respond uh, um, to um, the, the call of this case, uh, of this matter. They are not, um, don't appear to be online. They were not in the audience. So uh, this matter will be continued generally. It will not be continued to July 20th until we get confirmation from um, the applicant that they wish to proceed on the 28th. So, so we'll just, you know, continue it generally. Um, the next matter on tonight's um, agenda is a 705 public hearing, Mass Electric Company for a request for determination of applicability for upgrades at 15 Mill Street in Auburn. Is there a motion open? So moved. Is there a second? A second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It's a vote. All right. Anyone here from Mass Electric? And there is. Thank you. If you want to come right over yeah, on the sure. side. Yeah. Here's the um, green cards. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And can you tell us who you are? Absolutely. My name is Heidi Graff. I'm with BSC Group, and I'm here representing the Massachusetts Electric Company. Okay. For the proposed work to upgrade the Pondville substation located at 15 Mill Street to allow for uh, the interconnection of new solar um, sites in the town of Auburn. Okay. So the project activities consist of mounting new capacitor coupled voltage transformers. Those are the CCVTs that are discussed in the cover letter. Those will be mounted on a beam. The picture that you have open, sir, is great to look at. So the, um, the metal structures that you see in that picture, they'll mount a beam across them and put the CCVTs on top of that beam. They're also going to be upgrading some of the equipment inside the control house and replacing one of the uh, voltage regulators that will, they'll use the existing foundation so there'll be no ground disturbance associated with the uh, voltage regulator. The only ground disturbance that is proposed is for the underground conduit that is required to connect the CCVTs that are mounted on those two structures and bring that cable into the control house. So that work is entirely within the 100 foot buffer zone to bordering vegetated wetland. Uh, at its closest point, it's about 64 feet. The work area is at closest point is 64 feet from that BBW. And we're proposing to install 62 linear feet of underground conduit uh, in that 100 foot buffer zone. All of the work will be, yeah, the pictures are. So those steel structures that you see, those are uh, what are called the dead end structures. And those are located inside the fenced yard. Um, all the work proposed within that gravel area for the ground disturbance. Um, so they'll um, install bottles or silt socks, whatever the contractor is using for a BMP between the work area and the edge of the fence line, which is the closest part to the wetland. Then they will excavate a trench approximately three feet to two and a half to three feet deep, install the conduit, which is PVC piping, 
to then backfill with the existing uh, crushed stone that's there. So that is the, um, the general scope of work for the ground disturbing activity that is um, under the jurisdiction of the Auburn uh, Wetlands Protection Bylaw. We consider it an exempt activity under the Wetlands Protection Act because it is just in the, the upper zone and we're not expanding um, the fence line. Uh, how long would it take you to uh, finish the work? It depends on the availability of the contractors, if they use an in-house crew or if they have a contractor do it. So it depends on the manpower, the availability of supplies, and the weather. Okay. Um, I had a similar size project like this in Vilrica, and they finished the underground work in less than a week. Right. So it can be done quickly because it's not a very long run, and they usually backfill as they build, dig, install some PVC, and backfill as they go. And when would you like to start this project? They would like to start it late fall, maybe early winter, um, but again, that's uh, <clears throat> dependent on whether um, there's some the outage restrictions on when they can work on the transmission line at the substation. So as long as the timing for the outage schedules that they're allowed to take down that line um, and have the crew and the equipment, hopefully this winter, late fall, early winter. Um, I have no other questions. Any questions, Tom? Make it any questions? Awesome. Just wondering about the soil stockpile, the MPs, and are you going to be covering it or lining it with plastic or anything? Just to they shouldn't have a lot of soil stockpile because they'll be backfilling as they go. Gotcha. Um, and I believe they had done the testing at the site to see if the soil was contaminated and there wasn't any report of contamination. So that's usually where they would put the soil, the soil concern, yeah. stockpile on poly or something like that if it's okay. contaminated, but they didn't find that there. And how deep will the cotton would be installed? Three. So they usually excavate about two and a half, three feet down. Okay. So it'll be in between. I'm not exactly sure the depth, but that's the lowest that they would excavate. Understood. Patrick, any questions? No. Oh. Okay. Um, is there any public comment? Uh, there being none, is there a motion to close? We can motion to close the public hearing. Is there a second? I'll second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right, so vote. Thank you so much. Thank you, and uh, we'll more, most likely make a decision this evening. Great, thank you. All right, thank you. I've been advised by Ms. Buto that um, 710 public hearing, uh, notice of intent filed by Sean Griffin for 17 Wall Street is going to be continued to July 28th of 2021. Uh, the next one on our agenda is the 715 public hearing. Uh, Jim Fabry, a notice of intent to construct a warehouse distribution facility at 190 Washington Street, Lot 3 in Auburn. Is there a motion open? So moved. Is there a second? Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right, so vote. Good evening. Good evening. Um, is this a good spot to set up? Sure. So, uh, I'll leave you see. Good evening. For the record, Travis Brown with Turning Point Engineering. Um, with me tonight is Owen Ryan, who also works for Turning Point. Um, this is for a project um, on lot three of the Commerce Park subdivision that you folks had recently approved. Um, prior to that, there was a pad ready site plan. Prior to that, there was an ANRAD issued for this property. Um, I'm sure you're well familiar with it. We are. Um, so lot three is uh, on this sheet. Here's the proposed subdivision road down here. So lot three here. Um, this is about 32 acres of land. Uh, what you see here being proposed to be disturbed is uh, 10 or 11 acres. Um, this is for a Ross Express warehouse uh, distribution facility. Um, these folks currently are in Sutton Mass at the industrial park down there. Um, they've kind of outgrown that facility. They want to come to Auburn, have a little bigger space, um, and bring their business here. Um, so we have uh, provided a notice of intent um, for the construction of a uh, warehouse facility, um, which is this brown area here. There's about 3,500 square feet of office, and then the remaining portion of the building. Um, How many square feet? 
3,500 of office, 44,800 square feet of warehouse. So what they have is loading docks that are standard loading docks four feet down from the finished floor elevation of the building. We have 40 on each side under this scenario. Um, we provided a basically a truck only access point that will have a gate here. So these trucks will come in either back into these docks here. Um, trucks that want to access the back will back in here. Also provided um, some outdoor storage of trailers, uh, which are depicted here, and then the tractors, which they typically detach from the trailers. Um, at the end of the day, uh, they would line those up. Uh, there's a small maintenance shed, um, no uh, heavy um, activities of filling a tire or topping off the oil or something like that. But they're not going to be doing repairs here in this facility. Um, given the nature of this facility, um, this is a LUPL um, water management. Um, we designed that accordingly to remove 44% of the total suspended solids. Um, that information has been reviewed um, by the planning board's peer review engineer grades. It came back and said the stormwater all looks good. Um, there's some minor comments. We met with planning last night. Um, there's minor uh, site changes, nothing that would change this plan um, for them. So we're on the right track uh, with them. This basin here is the same basin that was identified on the definitive subdivision plan, so that has not changed. The only thing that has changed is this parking area, now designed over here, will be discharging basins, deep sunk catch basins to a pipe network, discharging to this, which will be treated and infiltrated uh, before being discharged to the wetland. This basin over here, if you remember, was identified as a temporary sediment basin. Um, that is now an infiltration basin. Uh, that will collect runoff from this parking area in the back and then be discharged to that basin. We also have a small underground infiltration area here that will uh, collect runoff from the parking area out front. Um, the building will be collected by roof drains that will discharge over in this location as well. Um, the limit of work on this plan is virtually identical to the one that was shown on the subdivision. So there's no additional disturbance on this side of the project. Now we are going in doing a little more clear for a portion of this site. I have identified the old erosion control line, which would come up here and then up. So it's basically this sliver in here that we were looking to. And within that area, um, there'll be some slopes that will be revegetated. Uh, a good amount of the parking area and project in general are outside of the 100-foot buffer zone. Uh, that 100-foot buffer zone is depicted in red here, which comes down in that location. So a good amount of the impervious parking areas, the trucking is outside of that 100-foot uh, buffer zone. Um, this parking area will be accessed in two locations. Uh, for mainly office staff and then the truck. Occasionally truck drivers will come park, grab a truck, go out for the day. Typically how Ross runs is they are overnight deliveries and they're just local within New England. Um, so that's the summary of the project. Uh, we are doing um, the same erosion control as what's out there now. Uh, straw wattle, silt fence, and what the contractor typically does is the mulch berms, which seem to prevent erosion into the wetlands. Um, we have received a DEP file number with no comments. I um, believe everything is addressed them, and then general engineering review through the planning board. <clears throat> so is the majority of the site cleared now? The majority of the site is cleared. What was permitted previously has been cleared. All right. The area that we are showing to be additionally cleared is an open touch gap. Understood. Okay. Um, I mean, I've been to this site several times. 
um, and I know you prepared before us in the past. Um, you know we'd like to take a look. So um, depending on how, what the weather looks like this weekend, um, and whether you can attend or not, I, I know this is at the back end of the property, so I think we could probably walk it ourselves. Um, if you wanted to um, to attend, you could, of course. It's up to you. Sure. But I think um, we want to just take a look, uh, confirm um, the information you provide to us. And so my suggestion would be, and also you still haven't received plenty more approval, or, or they haven't closed their public hearing yet, correct? Yeah. So my suggestion would be that we take a look and uh, we continue this until the 28th, if that's agreeable to you. It is. Can is I there ask, anything that... Yeah, I was just going to ask, like, why Why are you pushing it back? Is there... Can you give us a little... Well... I mean, it's a no, foot, no, no build zone, so I'm just trying to understand why we can't just respect that. What part? On the left side. Side clearing, here? Yeah, clearing... Water. Yeah, so in general, we... Um, provide that 25 foot buffer. There's a small area where it gets pinched down here that we are going into it. But for the most part, all of the work is outside the, the 25 foot buffer. But it, it's there for a reason. Is there not giving me any? I mean, I think, other than... I think not to cut in on you, but I think what, what Allison is saying is that, you know, as part of our special conditions, um, to um, do an analysis. Basically, you have to show why you're intruding into the 25-foot uh, no-build zone. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what um, that's what she's uh, asking about. Yeah, and I think maybe uh, what we do prior to then is to state that out and maybe look at that area. Okay. Is there an opportunity for some restoration plantings? As you can see, I don't know what this looks like on the ground, but it's bearing. Is there an opportunity to do some restoration plantings and be able to do this work? I mean, that would be... Uh, a nice compromise, you know, yeah. uh, compensate by if you, you know, build in the 25 foot uh, no build zone to provide replication or actually even new new wellings. So it'd be amenable to that. And I guess once it's staked, we could see what exactly is there. And if we wanted to maybe provide some supplemental plantings or something, we'd be happy to try to do that. All right. Good. Also, the, the lot three extends to the west there, right? Yeah, it goes all the way to the stay mass pipe. as it is. Yeah, as far as we know, there is a slope here, so access to that would be extremely be difficult. On. But it also looks like, if you look at the cul-de-sac, it looks like, uh, is that would that be considered lot four? So this area would be lot two. Lot two. So one was out at the street, this is two and three. Okay. Yep. All right, Thank so um, what do we have on for the 28th? We can put them, we'll put them at 10, 15. I'm sorry, 10, 15. I'm sorry, 10, 15. <laughs> you, were, wait, you were trying to see if I was still awake, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you can pass mine too. All right. Okay, so is, uh, is there a motion to get the hearing to July 28th at 7, 15? So moved. Is there a second? A second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right, it's a vote. All right, so uh, like I said, we would <coughs> probably um, go there Saturday if the weather permits it. Okay. You don't need to attend if you know. So, um, and we'll see you on the twenty eighth. Is there anything that you would like staked? Perhaps I mean I'll check on these wetland flags and make sure they're refreshed, and then you'll obviously see the limit of work that was done. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, turning to other business, uh, we received a request for uh, certificate of compliance for 166 Bridgewater Avenue. Um, when the application was submitted, the uh, owner had, had not been able to as bill plan. I'm advised that they in fact found one. Uh, they requested that uh, it be continued to July 28th, 2021. Um, the next matter for the business is our billboards at Arvin Mall, and that would be Mr. Bornstein. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Can you hear me? Uh, hi. Hey. So for the record, Mark Boren, I'm an attorney at the law 
Audition Duke in Worcester, uh, representing uh, Outfront Media LLC. This evening I'm joined uh, by Angela, who is a representative of Outfront. Um, before, you, so before you this evening, because uh, this project previously received a technical determination of possibility, uh, this project was previously proposed by another billboard developer um, back in 2018, and that negative determination uh, was, was issued accordingly. Uh, recently, Outfront obtained uh, a new set of plan approval for the project, um, and as it was doing its due diligence, it determined that there were some um, additional utilities under the proposed location of for the more easterly uh, proposed billboard. Uh, and it was determined that the, the footing and the pole had to be relocated in order to accommodate those uh, particular uh, utilities. And so we're, we're before you this evening to explain that change. Um, the new footing itself would, um, I'm, I'm, I'm informed by my client, would um, expand, um, and, but would actually be uh, less deep. So the, the proposed um, structure uh, was previously proposed to be, uh, I believe, 14 feet by 14 feet and then 15 feet deep. Now it will be 20 feet by 24 feet, but it will only be 6 feet deep. So a, a, a nine-foot uh, nine difference in terms of how deep the footing will, will be installed in the ground. Now this proposed footing is in the buffer area. Uh, the buffer is wide or before the commission. Um, however, the proposed footing uh, for the easterly side is is exclusively in uh, the parking lot of the optimal. So the air is, is, is already degraded, um, which is why the commission previously granted uh, the negative determination of applicability. So we're before you this evening to explain this particular change, uh, get the thoughts of the Conservation Commission, and, and hopefully confirmation that, that this minor change to the project uh, would not necessitate another uh, filing with, with the commission. But uh, we're happy to answer any, any questions that, that All right, so, um, well, I have one thought. <clears throat> when we issued the original termination of applicability, a different, um, a different vendor, correct, or a different applicant? That, that's correct. But as I understanding, the, the work remains the same, regardless of who the applicant is. In this instance, uh, the work is primarily, but you are correct, as a different applicant. Do you know why the original applicant dropped out or did not um, follow through on the negative determination? Uh, it's, it's, I, I don't know specifically, but I suspect that it has something to do with, with COVID-19 and, and general delays of, uh, for the project. I don't know, Angela, if you could confirm that or not. Yeah, they actually um, stopped doing business in Massachusetts, and so they weren't moving forward with building this site at all. And just pardon me if, if you don't mind me asking. Um, did they have a to to install the pole with someone? Was it with the town of Auburn or someone else, or what, the owner of the Auburn Mall? That's, that's our understanding. So there would be there would be a, a lease agreement with the town with uh, with the Auburn, on the Auburn Mall's property. And in addition, there is a separate donation agreement that uh, out front will. Uh, that outfront has signed with, with the town, which has been approved by the board and executed by the, by the town manager. Okay, and, and just to be clear, outfront is not as interest to the previous applicant, correct? That's correct. Okay. Uh, well, it, it, it's, a, it's a little unusual in the sense that, um, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a different entity that is now seeking to, um, to make changes to, um, you know, a prior project. Um, I mean, I think it's something that's probably worthy of discussion among members of our board. Um, so I'm going to actually pull the board and see what the consensus is. Tom, what are your thoughts about this? It doesn't seem like it's that much of a major change other than the location. Um, and the, like you said, the, the difference in how deep they're going to be digging, it's going to be a little bit of a different size, bigger, bigger but not as deep. Yeah, I don't see anything else significant change by, by relocating that where they have another new plan. So, right. Megan, any thoughts? 
uh, it was, so it, just to, it was, this is entirely within land that's already been developed, right? It's already yes. de degraded. degraded. Yeah. yeah, it's a parking lot, basically. Uh, yep. Well, let's talk about that for a bit. So um, is this, is it a boring machine that's used to dig the hole? How is the hole actually um, dug out? Do you know? Yeah. I don't know what the word is, a backhoe? Like it's a, it's a big hole. Okay. How, so they'll remove the soil and get rid of it. Okay. How, what's the diameter of the, uh, the post that's going to be needed? Do you recall? The post itself, I think, is... The pole? Yeah. Yeah. The pole, post, however you want to refer to it. We might have that in the, in the spec sheet. Give us one second. Yeah, let me look at this. Michael. Yes. It's a 20 by 20 foot area. Twenty feet. It's a large foot. Concrete. Okay. Area. Right. And how about the, what's the name of the pole, though, that goes into it? I believe the pole's going to be bolted to the top of the concrete oh. structure. Okay. So it's... My all right. I think we just got the answer right, Mr. Moody. Um, Allison, any thoughts? No. Patrick? Nope. Okay. Um, so, uh, uh, Attorney Bornstein, you have probably heard this before. We'll better under advisement. And yeah. we will more, most likely make it this evening, and you will hear from us. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> next matter is uh, 498 Rochdale Street. Um, I've been waiting to have some meaningful conversation with DP about this. I haven't had none. Uh, I actually want to send them a letter we can do to um, get their attention on this. Um, uh, Mr. Brokus of the Abutters, Mrs. Baroque has sent me um, a picture. Uh, a day or two ago. Sorry. That's okay. Indicating that the, um, they, they have water infiltrating almost to um, the wall adjacent to their driveway. Now, part of that, of, of course, may be due to the fact that we've had a lot of heavy rain, but uh, we also, um, that, and Megan, just for your um, knowledge, it's been an ongoing issue uh, with our board for probably the last five years, if not longer. Um, and involved an applicant that um, went ahead, did work, um, filing a notice of intent. We issued an enforcement order. They then filed the notice of intent. He had, um, he had an engineer on board, and then when the work was done, the work didn't comply with what was filed with us. And so as a result, um, DEP was then involved. Uh, we issued additional enforcement orders. DEP has been involved out there. Um, our commission has actually issued fines against the, uh, the property owner. And uh, there was a change, I think, in the, um, the, the person in charge of the, the uh, enforcement effort at DEP. Uh, this was probably two or three months ago. Um, so uh, if the, I wonder if the board would um, uh, make a motion to have me send a, a letter to DEP asking them. I think they, they can send someone out here and, and, and advise us where the status is. If they want to have a meeting on site, we can certainly make arrangements to do that, but I think it's going to be done on an official basis. So if anyone wants to make a motion, um, please do so. So moved. Okay. Allison made a motion. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. Discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Sir. And then uh, finally, the we have on our, uh, not finally, but we, under business or other business, we have uh, a complaint was filed. This is not it. Uh, <laughs> at 167 South Street. So um, we've been advised, we had issued uh, the order conditions uh, for this property 2018, uh, which I'm advised has now expired. Uh, it appears that there is um, activity in, in the buffer zone that has been uh, ongoing. My understanding is that um, the building inspector was out there today. Okay, and uh, there can be, I don't know if it's um, exactly what's being done there, if dirt is being um, offloaded there or taken from the site, but apparently it's activity taking, taking place in the buffer zone. 
So um, we, I remember going to the site. Um, the the applicant had indicated that they were going to build a house there. I'm advised that in fact this has been constructed there. Um, I think given the fact that the work is ongoing and because there is no order conditions um, in effect for the site currently and its buffer zone activity, uh, it seems to me that a cease and desist order is probably required. But I am more than happy to discuss this with, um, with the commissioners. Tom, what do you think? I think it's a great idea. Okay. Austin? Are we looking for like pictures or is there any more stuff? I mean, are we going to look at it? I think we are going to look at okay. it. I think we can take a look on Saturday. Um, yeah, if everyone feels strongly, I'm, I'm in support. I just generally feel like I want to see what's actually going on. You know, Absolutely. See Patrick, what do you think? Yeah, I'd like to see um, exactly uh, what's going on with the material, um, whether it's just from that pile or if he's actually actively using it as a gravel pit. Yeah, that's part uh, of my concern is too. Yeah. And Megan, what do you think? Agreed. I want to see it. All oh, right. Okay. Okay, so um, in that case, is there a motion to um, to issue a assist? Make a motion we issue a cease and desist order. Is there a second? A second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, so vote. Okay. And so you can um, send that to me tomorrow and I'll sign it. Okay. Um, for uh, the substation at 15 Mill Street in Arbor, um, is there a motion? I make a motion where you show a negative determination. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It's a vote. All right, site visits. So um, I think, Megan, um, when um, you were interviewed, we told you we generally do site visits on Mm -hmm. the permitting, and of course the weather's been crappy, but um, um, what we have done in our, our sort of custom has been to, we meet, if we can, if people are available, we meet for breakfast at the Heritage okay. at 8, and then we go on our site visits. Um, so um, it seems to me we should take a look, even though, um, I mean, I'm presuming, and I don't know why Gold Star didn't appear tonight, but it makes sense that we should check it out anyway, because uh, there's obviously some butter um, opposition to that. Um, I suppose we could look at 17 Willow Street. And then absolutely, we should take a look at 165 and also 190 Washington Street. So um, if you're if people are available for sidewalks, um, and we generally, you know, if it's pouring rain, we don't go out there. So um, if the weather holds up, um, those who would be interested in, in doing sidewalks this Saturday, we would uh, meet at um, on the Heritage at 8, and then we would be on our way afterwards. Okay. Um, is there any new business? We were going to go over the special conditions. We were. Also, do we have to talk about IT improvements needed? I think, so Caleb, you want to discuss that? <clears throat> so the IT improvements needed, um, the town administration is just looking for trying to make both rooms here and BOS more friendly in case we have to go back to Hi hybrid. Hybrid. If we stay hybrid or we go back to full remote, um, anything that you guys see that you, you think we need. I can't guarantee that we'll get it. <coughs> right. We need a fun this computer on a screen, I would think. So that computer is just basically for the camera. She has. She these screens oh, okay. with with the meeting. This computer is on all, all three screens. Right. Okay. Yeah, it just it makes it hard if we're trying to communicate with somebody, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I, so um, regarding the special conditions, we are actually um, we have another member who's going to be coming on board. Her name is Catherine Nordberg, um, and I actually that she would have here tonight but apparently she and I, I I love actually left a message for her and advised her that she needed to be sworn in uh, by today in order to participate tonight I'm told that she would do that um, but I would I would rather if you don't mind wait until she's on the board and then we sit and discuss the special conditions okay so okay. agenda look for the 28th aside from We've turning point got um 
two new ones, and then you've got you'll have 17 Willis, um, 190 Washington Street, and then 63 Chestnut. So you'll have five. Okay. So hopefully between now and we can take a look at the additional special conditions. Megan will make sure you get a copy of those. I yeah, did. Okay. I did send them to her. I did not put them on the agenda this week, so that way she could look them over and. Yeah, maybe next week. <laughs> so just, you know, I think the more we can her. look at it ahead of time, it'll help us <clears throat> go through them faster. But, yep. Um, what I can do is, is I can send them over to Catherine okay. ahead of time okay. and let her know that these will be addressed on the next meeting if you want to sure. take a look. And, um, Megan, I don't know if you've had a chance to do it, but uh, our regulation and our bylaw is also on the website. Okay. Now, it's, um, the printing should be two owners, so I forget how long they are. Like 40 something pages, maybe? Between the two. We can print your paper copy if you need it. Send the links to them. Yeah, yeah I can send them to you. Okay, yeah. yeah. Send them to you. Okay. Uh, so, Michelle is uh, is asked to take a leave of absence. We do anticipate, or she is represented to me, that she will be back in September. That's from her letter to her. And, um, so, and, uh, you know, I, as I think you know, I'm uh, Tony left us at the end of June. So, uh, Megan, I want to welcome you officially. I hope you enjoyed the experience. And uh, I think tonight's been able to rather typical. It was nice to see people in the audience again. So hopefully that will continue. Um, you know, I was thinking about the meeting minutes for April 14th. And of course, as you know, the problem is um, Michelle is, has taken a leave of absence. Nathan is no longer on the board. So that leaves, um, right now, that leaves uh, myself and Patrick. So I was even thinking about invoking the rule of necessity to approve these rather than wait until September. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that's reasonable um, given the circumstances. I reviewed the meeting minutes and I um, had no changes to make. If, um, do, you, do you have them, Allison? Sorry. Do you I do, yes. Oh, she was absent. I was absent, yeah. No, I have Are you ha Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was impressed with you. Right. Sorry. No, that's okay. So, um, the problem is, is that what I don't know procedural is whether, because they're all, you know, if one of us makes a seconds, it, Right. Well, the hard part is, is that you don't have a quorum. You're, you're never going to have a quorum. Yeah, that's right. And that's right. why I'm saying we can invoke the role of necessity. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, because otherwise, even when Michelle, like, let's say in September, they're going to be it's going to be five months. Right. Um, I'll tell you what. Let's continue this until the, the next meeting, mm -hmm. and then um, let's see if I can figure something. Okay. I mean, if we have to wait, we have to wait. You know. And then um, for the meeting minutes of June 8th. 23rd? Like I said, June 23rd. Okay. <laughs> just out of curiosity, why these like why are these being a it just seems like a really long time ago. Is that like a is it just fall through the crack? Mm, well, no. I wouldn't remember what was like. Going on. The reality is that um, they were probably they were prepared contemporaneously, right? They they were done a while ago. It just we never had everybody here at the meeting. You. I got gotcha. you. Okay. And now we run into the problem of so, one person's no longer on the board, okay. and the other one's off until the I fall. Gotcha. So which, if that's exactly right. So we would actually, you know, bring them up, and then if we didn't have a quorum, basically. Okay. And I so, and of course, the problem now is that we're never going to have a quorum. Never going to have a quorum. So that's why I think you we need four. need to invoke the necessity. Unfortunately, I think that's correct. Um, yeah. Sorry, it wasn't turned off. They review the meeting <laughs> video when they prepare the minutes. I gotcha. Okay. Especially when it's. Let's <laughs> have them prepared for months. Yeah. You know, did you 
Is there any minutes for June 23rd? Does anybody have them? I don't. I guess not. They were Yeah, I didn't have it. Wasn't just me. You know, we will take them up at the next meeting. I didn't realize oops, no. that I didn't put them in the packet. It's, Sorry it's, about that. It's all right. Don't worry it's about it. Uh, is there any So, okay. one thing I do think it would be helpful is if we site visits, maybe look a little bit at the town maps. Okay. Um, and I'll talk about this more next time, but but basically, a majority of the town is part of the public water supply. You know, contributes to the public water supply. So I think we just want to keep that in mind. Um, but it may help to actually look at the see is this in a priority zone or is this something we can. Um, same with wildlife. Do we have? Because that wasn't uh, that isn't in the town maps. Any of the NHSP, the natural heritage stuff. Um, so I don't know if we had wildlife habitat maps. We do paper maps. Also, the assessors handles updating these, so they're updated. Yeah. To be honest, but we do have paper maps, so we. Okay. Or we can get each, we can get copies for each member if you guys would rather have that. Yeah, same with the that FEMA maps. Those we're missing from the the um, FEMA maps definitely. How old are the habitat maps? Do you know? I'll have to look at them. Like it's been a while. Um, I think they've been updated in the last five years, but I have to I have to look at them. Okay. And okay. there are some other sources. I'll look at these ones before we go out on Saturday. But maybe if we just get in the habit of that. Um, okay. And. Oh, is it possible to get a list of the properties that the Conservation Commission owns, or do we do we specifically own land, or is it all just Town of Auburn? I think it's Town of Auburn, and certain parcels have restrictions for conservation use right. only. Yeah. So I can probably work with the assessor and get a list of the properties, and then does it have the conservation yeah so I, I, a map or something like that would be really cool because i just think ultimately my goal would be to try to get some more trails and open space and conservation use that conservation land because it doesn't seem like we're yeah, doing that now i'll probably bring adam and art in on that one because yeah he the open runs the open space, space committee yeah, so we need to work together okay. um you know because they're their plan that they put forward is really cool, but I think they maybe need us to help them and a little bit of funding that we have sitting around would be Definitely. great to put some trails out there. Which also, I think, um, for the Open Space Committee, Nathan was on that board Which representing one? conservation, so mm -hmm. he's not on conservation anymore. I think Allison just volunteered. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> What I'm passionate about, I guess, you know, as far as volunteering my time, I think that would be really useful. Um, do we need to appoint her officially? Let me talk to Adam about it, and then okay. we can do it at the next meeting if that's, that's yeah. the case. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah, that'd yeah. be terrific. Okay. If there is no other business, is there a motion? To I just one question, real quick. Uh, what were the what were all the sites this weekend? So Gold Star, 17 Willis Street, 165 South Street, and, and 190 Washington. And then all the GIS data you were talking about, on like the Mass Oliver. Yes, that, that is where the majority of it is, okay. if it's not on the town website itself. But I just, the town maps are really useful right. for all the other things. But, you know, in the wetlands map too, like, I always thought that we should like contact all the property owners that we think have wetlands, you know, near them and just make sure they know they're supposed to talk to us and educate them a little bit more. That's a whole nother thing. The Oliver maps also um, only update themselves as fast as so, right. Um, the, yeah. as, uh, it could even be last like old maps um, and the old Even the FEMA maps sometimes are. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, oh, hold on. Yes, sir. Uh, Mark Borenstein again for the record. I, I just wanted to understand the process regarding the commission um, uh, decision making for the. I thought the commission was going to make a decision to We forgot. I apologize. We did. No, yeah, yeah. I'm glad you're reminding us. Thank you so much. You know? So, uh, thank you. Um, the, the only, um, I don't, I don't have, 
problem with the change. Um, what I guess I'm stuck on is the fact that it's a different um, entity that is requesting it. Um, that's my only, my only. You know, that I can't think. I can't think of an instance where that that is kind of before. Yeah, no. I understand that's somewhat unique. Um, if it was full forces, I can certainly email town council um, attorney uh, Hennigan to confirm. Uh, my understanding. Um, I actually think with uh, a conservation planner yeah, about this particular issue to see if she had run into this before, and she said that the work itself is what is um, uh, for, yeah, that's the that's the determination is. So, um, and I will I'll note, although um, out out from media is not a uh, to the entity itself, they did um, uh, enter into a separate agreement. Angela, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, for uh, certain rights related to and I, I assume. Yeah, yeah, we do have an agreement with Total to uh, to assume the town agreement and so, their. So there was an assignment. There was, there, there was an assignment successor. When I say successor interest, I don't mean that they're the same entity. I understand that. So, uh, and, I, and you know what? I think um, that question. So, um, if you can. With a copy of the assignment, I think it'd be much easier for us to um, to make a decision on this. And you have that, right? Um, Angela, could you potentially uh, provide a copy to me, yep. and I can forward it all? Yep. Okay. It doesn't seem like significant enough changes no. to really warrant. So, no. that representation, and based on your that you will actually provide us with a copy of the assignment, it seems to me um, the change you're proposing is not significant change or significant enough change to re, uh, require you to file a new request for determination of applicability. Again, that's my opinion. But is there a... I make a motion that it doesn't require a second determination. Okay. I'll second that. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. So, or don't have to file with us, but just get us that assignment, okay? Absolutely. We'll get that to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Have a lovely evening. Thank you. Um, question, make sure I understand the process here. So on the mass electric uh, determination of applicability, right. so did we, <laughs> did we make a ruling? So we approved that it is, we said it is. We okay. issued a negative determination, meaning they we don't did. have okay. to file an NOC okay. and talent. Based on the representations that they made in their filing. Uh, okay. No significant impact. No significant impact, exactly. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. All right, I make a motion, we adjourn. All right. Through the chair one, oh. just before we do. Hybrid meeting, are you going to continue? Do you want to go um, full I'm in person? Do I have the choice? I'm just a little nervous about all the variants and the, the board ha the board has the commission has the ability to just take a vote and decide how they want to hold their meeting. Um, we have the ability, the governor has given us the ability to do so we have the discretion. So we have the discretion. I mean I, I take Allison's point. Um, I still think it hurts anything. Well, I mean other than the long intro that you have to do, it doesn't really and you know that bothers me a lot. I know. Um, no, it doesn't. Lot. The, the only kidding. thing you can't do is is dictate that someone has to be here if you're allowing remote mm. for others. That's that's. Um, so I think for the time being, uh, I mean, I know, you know, I mean, I listen to what's going on. I understand there's an increase in the Delta variant, and that if you're, you know, you haven't been vaccinated because you're, in, you're still at risk. Uh, that's my personal opinion, anyway. Um, so I think for the time being, let's continue with the hybrid. Okay. okay? Yeah, I'm getting busier too, so it may save me being able to attend if I can call on. Sure. But yeah. well, you know, I'm sure we'll revisit this at some point in the future. Okay. Yeah, you can do it. Do we vote? I don't think so. Okay. All right. All right. So, Again, make a motion. That we just. <laughs> <Not a motion. laughs> okay. Eight o'clock on the dot. All, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.